So it uh, is one of those things where I when I see how much guys get paid, I've never been the type of person to like because there are a lot of fans who say, oh, they don't deserve that type of money. They don't do that type of money. Mm-hmm. As long as the organization you're playing for is raking in billions a year, mm-hmm. I just feel like if you're at the top of your game and you get a signed $100 million contract, it, you, you earned it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it's just one of those things where it's, you know, somebody's always going to have a million dollars and there's always, always going to be someone who has $5,000. And that's, unfortunately, it's, it's what it, it is. It is what it is. Yeah, it, it's sports and it's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't and, know. And, and that's actually, um, that's, that seems like it's such a common thread. It's like, uh, one of the things that I think is, uh, interesting about a lot of different sports organizations, whether you're talking about the NFL or whether you're talking about mm-hmm. boxing, um, once you get to the high levels of like the people who are actually organizing these things, the people who are actually mm-hmm. in charge, I mean, you're talking about so much money and there's so much involved and like there's, there's then conversations about like, okay, like are there certain people pulling strings? Like are there mm-hmm. certain reasons why some people get drafted or some people succeed or, or like did, did someone, you know, take the fall to, you know, did someone get paid off to do some of these things? Like, right. um, and I know that MMA has has definitely um, been criticized for a lot of those, a lot of those factors. Um, mm-hmm. In your experience, having uh, watched sports and you understand the business side of it, um, is that a thing? Like, are there is there you know hands behind the curtain who are pulling strings? Like, are there any forces that that make uh, an impact on who succeeds and who doesn't absolutely um especially in the high school and college game oh um, okay boosters um you know hands under the table uh there was a story about um uh, uh, a player for the university of memphis mm-hmm. so um penny hardaway which he's a retired um nba player yeah, that's the school that he went to. Mm-hmm. So this kid that he, um, I'm going to say, kid, he has to be like at least 17, 18. A um, few years back, he helped this kid and his and the kid's mom with, you know, to, to move them into a better area in, in Memphis, Memphis, mm-hmm. Tennessee area. This is before he became the coach of the University of Memphis. But the kid was playing on an AAU team that you know that Penny Hardaway was familiar with and was friends with the coaches. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, um, this kid remembers Penny. He helped my mom out. He was always around. He you know he helped out my AAU team. Mm-hmm. He's the coach of University of Memphis now. I don't really the kids think I don't really got to go that far to play college basketball. Penny's a great guy. I'm gonna go play for him. So NCAA says, well, finds out about the money that was given to the kid. Mm-hmm. So they suspend the kid and make and this ridiculous thing where they're saying that he, the kid has to pay the money back. Oh, and it's fuck? just like, yeah, so it's this. The story has been not really swept in the road, but no one's really talking about it right now. But I, I guarantee when this kid goes to the NBA, they're going to bring it back up. But it's just it's just the r- ridiculousness of the NCAA. And for them to punish this kid when they know all of these backroom deals that are going on, and it's the and it, a lot of times it's the big corporations, it's the Adidas, it's the Nikes. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, they. Whenever you see a highly recruited high school football or basketball player go mm-hmm. to a school that's not like the, the big, the big, the big power name schools, mm-hmm. a lot of times it, it, it was some type of money that was paid that doesn't really come out um there was there's been so many scandals with the ncaa um you know reggie i think about reggie bush um, when he played for usc and you know after he was drafted by the new orleans saints it came out that you know his his family took money um for him to go to usc and you know his some of his relatives got a job at usc those type of things happen happen all the time and um I think for the NCAA to to act like you know they're coming they're coming down hard mm-hmm. on this type of stuff, it's just like 
No, man, it happens all the time. If you watch sports, you you know that it, it, it's it's a dirty game. So, it's what do you think is game. the the incentive of these brands and these boosters to like not have like f- for these for these athletes to not get paid? Like, why why would they want him to pay that money back? Like, why is there this concern that it's almost as if like these organizations are concerned of player autonomy? Like they don't want mm-hmm. them to be able to make their own decisions or be able to have decisions that are like independent. I, I I don't remember the name, but I remember hearing something about like, you know, um, college football players, um, you know, not being able to even accept money from like parents or, or suffer food. Like it's just like they're incredibly strict about mm-hmm. them being able to, to not like they have to it's almost it's almost if they have to use everything that's in the facility they... that's it i think it, i think it all honestly I, I think it all comes down to control mm-hmm. um they want to be able to control every everything that these kids do um and it, it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous um i will say um just as a fan uh race has a lot to do with it um I just think they don't want they don't want the kid that fi- like really figures it out mm-hmm. and, and you know says, you know, well, if I go to this school versus this school, they're offering me this. They're already telling me I have to go to college. So I'm gonna go to this school where they've told me, hey, we'll give your fi- your family fifty thousand dollars. I'm only gonna be there for a year. Because mm-hmm. they've already, I'm I'm already projected to go to the NBA, mm-hmm. so I'm a, you know, go go do my year, get to the NBA. By the time all this comes out, if they do find out, I'm already in the NBA. I don't get punished. Mm-hmm. The school gets punished, but I don't get punished. Mm-hmm. Um, these big corporations like you know like Nike and and Reebok and Adidas, I think they just because they know. The power of their brands. Mm-hmm. A lot of these kids will pick certain colleges because they know, oh, this college they're sponsored by Nike. So when I go, I may not get money, but I'm but gonna I'm get my a, foot in the door and yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all the Nike shoes I want, all the uh, Nike apparel I want, and then if I do make it to the NBA, I'm already I've already went to a Nike school. The school is sponsored by Nike, so I may even get a Nike shoe contract. Uh, like. I mean, it's it's no coincidence that Zion Williamson went to um, went to a school, went to Duke University, and um, you know, there, there, it's a Nike school. It's all about it's all about exposure because Nike, you know, Nike sponsors them, so Nike sends them two or three pairs of shoes a game, and they get free apparel and all that good stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa.